everyone, it's Justin again. Now that you can graph quadratic functions, uh, those that can be factored at least, we could use that skill to solve some word problems that would be pretty hard to figure out without a graph. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to answer questions about scenarios represented by quadratic functions. We'll work through two examples together, and then I'll give you a chance to do one on your own. The power in watts running through a circuit is dependent on its current, measured in amps, represented by the function p of c equals negative 20c squared plus 400c. What current is necessary to generate the most power? First, if we want to solve this, we'll need to put it in factored form. Once it's in factored form, we can graph it to see the important points, which will help us find out what current the most power is generated. So how would we factor this function? Since the leading coefficient is negative, we need to pull out a negative amount. And both terms are also divisible by 20, and they both have c's. So with the GCF of negative 20c, the remainder is c minus 20. Now that it's in factored form, finding the roots should be a lot easier. Take a second to see if you can identify them. The roots are 0 and 20. Remember, roots identify the x-intercepts, or in this case, the c-intercepts, so we can plot points at 0, 0 and 20, 0. The vertex will be in the middle of the roots at 10. To find how high the vertex is, we input that value into the function, which comes out to 2,000, making the vertex at 10, 2,000. After we draw the curve through the points, we now have enough information to answer the question. What current is necessary to generate the most power? The maximum power is found at the vertex, where the current is 10 amps. Now, let me just point out that we didn't actually need the graph on that last problem. We know that a maximum can only be found at the vertex. So we could factor the function, find the roots, locate the line of symmetry directly in the middle of those roots, and then plug that into the function to find the output for the vertex, which turns out to be at 10, 2,000. So then the maximum occurs when the current's at 10 amps. No graph is needed. But sometimes a jumble of numbers all over your paper is confusing to look at. Displaying it visually will help us understand what those numbers actually mean. Let's try another example. Dia works out by running up a large hill and back down. Her distance from the peak in meters over time in minutes is represented by the function d of t equals t squared minus 30t plus 225. How long after reaching the peak does she get back to the bottom? First, how would we factor this function? The factored form is t minus 15 times t minus 15. It's a squared binomial. Remember, graphing one of these is a little bit different because our root has a multiplicity of 2. This means that that root at 15 is actually the vertex. To find more points, we simply plug in another number and evaluate. And if we get that output 15 units to the left of the vertex, then it will be the same 15 units to the right. So here's our graph. Remember, this graph doesn't represent the hill itself, but rather D is distance from the top. Lower values means she's higher up the hill. So can you figure out how long after reaching the peak Dia got back to the bottom? There are actually two approaches here. First, we can find where she started, aka the bottom, and then find that same point on the other side of the line of symmetry, and then measure how long it is from when Dia is at the peak, when her distance from the top is zero, and that point. Or we can remember that the distance is mirrored anyway. So the distance from the bottom to the peak will be exactly the same answer with less work. Either way, we get that it took Dia 15 minutes to get back to the bottom from where she started. Let's see how you do with one of your own. 
Pause the video now and see what you come up with for this problem. First, we need to find the factored form. There's a negative leading coefficient and a GCF of 6. That GCF is just a constant, though, so it doesn't give us a root. We can, however, factor the remainder into p minus 7 and p minus 15. It means the roots are at 7 and 15. We know that the line of symmetry will be in between those roots, and if we input that value, we get the vertex. And we can graph the quadratic function. Question asked for the range where Manny will make a profit, which is anywhere between seven and $15. And if they want to make the maximum profit possible, they should charge 11. Once you understand how to graph quadratics and factored forms, solving these types of problems is easy. What about functions that can't be factored? We'll eventually learn how to graph those too, using different forms. In the next few lessons, We'll explore how quadratic graphs get moved around and why they sometimes can't be factored. See you then!